Okay, what I'd like to do now is tell you a little bit more about VMU. What I've done is I've moved the VMU program over onto this screen just because it's a little bit more convenient for me to operate on it right here during this uh, tutorial DVD. And I'll show you a couple of the options available in VMU. VMU is a really powerful program. I sometimes consider it to be a PowerPoint on steroids. And so when you're thinking about the, um, uh, you know, how you would make a video display, for those of you who are familiar with PowerPoint, just think about that. VMU is, a, in some ways, it's a lot like PowerPoint. So um, I'll come back here, go back into design mode, and uh, just like PowerPoint, PowerPoint has windows that you can put text in. Of course, up here we have a static text panel. Down here we have a scrolling text panel. You can do these diff various different things in, in um, PowerPoint. Um, and uh, what you've seen up until now is just kind of the standard VMU layout. VMU comes with this kind of a layout uh, with the message panel being kind of a wash green background and the static text panel being a little bit of a wash yellow background and so forth. But you can actually control all of the aspects of VMU yourself. For example, um, we come over here, VMU once again will right click, we bring up the designer window, that's this window right here. The designer window basically allows you to control all of the aspects of panels. Um, so here's my message panel, just click on it, um, and these are various options here that control the content of the message panel. That's why it says content options up here. Like for example, how messages are going to be visualized. Right now I say don't show a nickname. It's possible in IMU for each user, each person who sends a text message to have their own nickname for me to associate a nickname with my text messages. For example, if I turn on um, a message with a nickname, it will show a nickname and then this little character right here and then my message. It might say, in my case, Bill, quote, go Yanks, and John, quote, hello, mom, and so forth. Um, in that selection right there, I can control the character that's used. It could be a colon, colon space, right character, or so forth. Another thing we could do is pick slash nickname separately. In this case, um, there's a picture and a nickname associated with the message. One of the things you might have noticed in IMU was that user picture down here. In IMU, each user can actually have a picture associated with them. And when they send a text message, or a picture message, that picture could be shown in this area, nickname area with, uh, and I can control the size of the picture and the size of the nickname with these other content options over here in the special panel. This is just the default picture that's showing up, and that's why that's there. But all of the different aspects of how text messages are visualized here in the message panel can be changed with these options. We'll go back into do not show a nickname. And then the colors. Actually, in addition to each user having their own nickname, such as Bill, John, what have you, each user can actually have their own text color. I could send a text message to IMU saying plus color red. And from that point forward, anytime I send a text message, if we've set up VMU to do this, any text message from me would then show up red. Um, and these options here in the colors portion of the message panel allows you to control exactly how those text messages are visualized in terms of color. If I uncheck this, then the natural color that the person had, the default color in this case white, would be used for all their text messages. If I send a text message, it might be red, John sent one, it might be blue, and so forth. Um, by default, we have this, use these text messages. I like this odd and even kind of blue, black. It really helps each message kind of stand out. But what you can do is, if you want to change that color, you just click on this, and we can change that with the black. So now every other one is black and so forth. Make each one uh, black and white, black and gray, and so forth. Just any kind of color combination you want to come up with, you can do. And this, this shows how, um, how those messages are, are visualized in terms of the color. So one of the things we notice here 
in this designer window is that there's a couple of sections here. This says content options, but this actually scrolls. Panels have content options, appearance parameters, and their placement parameters. I'll talk about each one. The content options are unique to each panel. If I click on a static text panel, you notice it doesn't really have all that many options. It just has the font and the actual static text that's going to be shown up here. Um, every panel does have a font parameter, so I can say, let's say I want to make this a little bit bolder, um, like that, maybe bold italicized to see your message. See now that the text is italicized. I can change the font color just by clicking on this. So you can see how you can uh, change the font, style, the color, and so forth just with a few mouse clicks. Another thing we can do here is see this, notice the shadow mode. Normally this is set to none, but I like it. We could say uh, a 3D shadow, and we can make that drop shadow be maybe black. So now you see that the text actually has kind of a 3D drop shadow effect, just with a couple of mouse clicks. We can do that same thing with the message panel. Come over here to the font section. Uh, we'll say shadow mode 3D with a black drop shadow. It's not going to show up too well with that black text there, but I can fix that. Come over here and change that text to white, maybe. So now you can see this same kind of a 3D drop shadow effect just by coming over here to the font, saying 3D shadow, and there you go. Every panel um, that, that has text output does have a font tab, so you can control exactly how that font looks. Choose a different font for you. Impact and regular. So now the scrolling text is going to look like that with a, let's say, a 3D drop shadow with black. So you can see how you control fonts. Another thing um, you can control is the appearance. Every single panel, regardless of the type of panel, does have this appearance section. Um, so let's check this message panel. I'll show you a little bit more about this appearance. Um, one of the things we can do with the panel is fill it with a custom color, and that's what we're doing right now. We're filling it with green. And you'll notice this alpha blend slider down here. This controls kind of a level of transparency of the panel. This background, you may not be able to see it very well, but it has like a little texture to it, kind of like a, a rock granite type texture. And we can see that texture, and if we don't set this alpha blend too heavy, we can actually see that it tints the panel. We can also see that texture behind it. Of course, if we move this all the way to the right hand side, then it uses that color directly. So if we want to have just strong, solid panels, this one would be, let's say, a strong yellow up there, and maybe uh, kind of an orange down here. You set this alpha blend all the way up, 100%, and you can see that now these panels are no longer transparent. But the alpha blending does give it a, a kind of a nice nice appearance. So that's what this background, uh, this alpha slider is in this color. It allows you to control the panels, you know, how deeply saturated the color is, and if there's a background bitmap, in this case there's this texture, it allows us to kind of see through, through to that texture. Another appearance property of all the panels is the border property. Right now, and by default, the border is set to none. But one of the things we could do is we could set this to a flat border, and we could say um, we'll put a white border all the way around that, that panel. And in this case, we can control the alpha blend of the border separate from the panel. So we can make that border a very strong white border, you can see here, even though the panel itself is semi-transparent. But a 2D flat border is not very appealing to me. Usually what we do is we say we want a, a 3D border. And with a 3D border, what we do is we can control the width of the top, left, bottom, and right, as well as the color. And so what, what happens here is this. If we choose the 
the color on the top is going to be the top and left is going to be white and the bottom and right is going to be black and we adjust that so what we could do is we can make it appear as though this panel is popping out what we could do down here is we'll choose this static text panel and do just the opposite we'll come over here to border and we'll say 3D but in this case we'll say that the top and left are black and that the bottom and right are white. And it makes it look as though that panel is now depressed into the page. So by just uh, adjusting these border parameters here, you can see um, that just with a few mouse clicks here I can make this go from something that's really bland and rather ugly looking to, to something that's kind of kind of got some interest to it. We can make these panels kind of start to pop out. We can control the width of each one of those sections. The, the left section, the top section, bottom and right, and make it look like it's really popping out. To do that effectively, is, you, you notice it starts running into the text here. And so now might be a good time to scroll down a little bit further into the placement area of the designer window. Every panel, regardless of its type, also has placement parameters. The main placement parameters are the position, for example. We can control the, the left-hand side of the panel, the right-hand side, the top and bottom. We can control them like this very precisely, or you can control them just with the mouse, just by dragging the panel around and moving the little handles here. But in the context of this borders, the next section over is the more interesting. That says the viewing area. If you take a very close look, you'll notice that these inside, just inside the panel, you have this dashed line. That's the viewing area. What we can do is we can control exactly where the text appears within that overall panel just by controlling the viewing area. So by moving that in a little bit, now we can see that the, the 3D nature of that panel becomes, uh, you know, the text is kind of out of the way. We can make that panel pop out a lot more. Go into a demo mode here. We'll talk about it in a second just to put some text there so you can see just how much that looks like it's popping out. So that's a pretty fun thing you could do with VMU. Just drop a couple of panels in, um, put a 3D border on it, control the, the thickness of that border. Move the viewing area over um, as appropriate. So these are all things that you could do to help you to control VMU. Uh, and this is used over and over again, this concept of placement and appearance properties of panels. There's a couple of other parameters too. Shading style, whether you um, have a kind of a, let's see, give it a kind of a, a softer border on the panel like that. Or even a 3D drop shadow effect like this. Or we can make this um, appear to be casting a drop shadow. Over the background. And speaking of backgrounds, up until now we've been using this textured background that's the default background of VMU. What we could do is if we Go over here into the designer window. You'll notice that there's a couple of tabs. One that says the panels. So far we've been operating on the panels. And then there's another one here which is the main window. Uh, right now we can we can choose what we want the main window to look like. Right, we're tiling a bitmap. What I'll do is I'll, I'll load in a different bitmap um, just to show you some of the other things that we can do with VMU. Uh, I'll load this Mobile Entertainment Summit background. 
Pangolin participates as a sponsor in the Mobile Entertainment Summit. Uh, this is their background here. And usually what we do is um, we do real simple text messaging over this background. So here I just loaded this background and j just to show you how panels work and their transparency, I'll go ahead and add a panel. We'll make this the message panel. Um, come over here again to appearance and we can make this alpha blending all the way to the left. So now this panel is completely transparent. I'll make this turn this into the message panel. So this is where messages are going to appear. And what we'll do is we'll make the colors maybe white and gray so that they'll show up on this background and make the font bigger. Like that. Let's show a nickname. Stretch the panel out to about where we'd like to go and go into play mode. And so now you can see what, what typically happens at a mobile entertainment summit where people are sending in text messages to the panel. This is projected up onto the video screen and people tend into text messages and they appear over the background of their logo. Of course, any panel can be completely or partially transparent, I can come up here to this message panel and maybe I want to um, give it a, a maybe a kind of an orange wash and I'll turn on the alpha blending a little bit. And you can see that with just a little bit of alpha we could separate that panel from the background. Applying what we learned just a little while ago, what we'll do is come over here and put a 3D border on it, just like that, and there you go, nothing to it. So just by loading a, a bitmap background into the, into the background, and we can have panels that have partial transparency, put borders around those panels, it really makes something um, kind of uh, exciting. Let's take this another step or two further. And I'll go ahead and load an example layout, which is um, something that was done for a Mountain Dew promotion. Mountain Dew has something that they call their Action Sports Tour. This is a very big thing for Mountain Dew. And um, to, to do uh, the Action Sports Tour SMS promotion for Mountain Dew, this layout was made as a a demo example for them to consider. Uh, this layout has four areas. Uh, one is a music video we'd be playing sort of like an MTV style video. One which is a, a voting area where people can vote for their favorite action sport. Um, one which is a, a chatting area where people could talk about what they're seeing. And then a do tour highlights. This would be an actually a live video window that would be showing what was happening on the action sports at that point in time. Now, this layout looks very complex, very cool. You might be thinking, how did they do that given the VMU tools? What kind of border style is that? And so forth. And actually, this is a very simple layout. Because what this is, is if I come over here to my designer window, what we can see is that the back background bitmap itself is this whole Mountain Dew type layout. And actually what we've done is we've just placed panels on top of a bitmap that was actually created in Photoshop. And this is actually a pretty common technique if you want to uh, do something really kind of step it up a notch with, with your visuals. You just create your background bitmap in uh, Photoshop or something like that and then just lay panels over on top of it. And those panels could be completely opaque uh, in this case, the panels are completely transparent, as you can see here. Uh, this particular textured background was done in Photoshop, and we just put a transparent panel over to it. Um, likewise, in the chat area. And then just put a, a media player in a live video window. Next thing you know, I'll go ahead and go into play mode. And we can see, oops, I 
World Series is the question here, but you can see kind of uh, what this is going to look like. You have our Avril Lavigne music video going down here, live video of the action sports tour going on here, voting and chatting happening at the same time. Show you a couple of other things about VMU uh, in particular. As I said, in the actual proposal, this was actually supposed to be a live video. We put a media player there with some example video of action sports, but what I'll do is I'll delete that panel uh, and add another panel that's going to be a real live video panel. Panel, add a panel. Move the panel up into that area. Remember over here I said that this is the different types of panels you have to choose from. You could choose a time of day clock, static text and scrolling text we've already seen, the message panel we've seen, voting panel we've seen. This particular one I'm going to show you is uh, DirectX Video Capture. In the latest version we've changed the name of this to Live Video. Uh, but what I've got here, this little box, is a expert DVD maker. This costs seventy-five dollars, and it's available from uh, Tiger Direct. Uh, despite the fact that it says it's a DVD maker, what this little box allows you to do is a couple things. You can take video into it from a VCR or something like that, and in real time create a DVD with a PC. But we're going to use this for something differently. We're going to use this as a video capture device. That is, we've got a little camera over here capturing video. It's going to be coming into this little capture device here. I'll select this USB 2880, that's what that is, and it, right now I can say open video driver, and it'll show me this is the live video, this is what it's going to look like. So by clicking that open video driver, what I could do is I can actually see what this is going to look like live while I'm actually playing around with my layout here, positioning things. And one of the things that it revealed is that the viewing area was just inside, so I'll come back down here to the viewing area. And make all of these zero. Oops, wrong panel. Make all of these zero. So that my live video is the entire width of the panel that I placed there. And a couple of other things I could do. The panel options. I could say open video driver, and then I come over here and say uh, video settings. Many video capture devices give you the capability of adjusting the, the video settings that will be used. For example, the brightness, contrast, uh, hue, saturation, what have you. Um, and VMU will remember these settings on each device that you have. So let's set this, let's say I want to bump up that saturation, make that desk look a little bit better. Uh, the rest looks pretty good. So now we would go into play mode. What we have here is our live music video that's coming out of uh, a media file. We have voting and chatting going on, and real live video from this camera. Now in a club situation, oftentimes this is done, where you have uh, live video, a camera on the dance floor, something like that. So this is a way you can use VMU. Um, you can play music videos, chatting, voting. You, can, you know, a lot of times uh, clubs have a screen, in them already, uh, and they a lot of times use that screen for music videos. This is an example of how you can use that same screen. You don't have to sacrifice to do only text messaging or only videos or only live video. This is an example of how you can do all of them at the same time. And uh, while we're while we're here, I'll load up a couple of other layouts that we've done just to give you a couple of other examples of what can be done with VMU. Um, this was done for University High School. I know a lot of people who are watching this tutorial DVD are mobile DJs uh, doing high school dance parties, proms, and that sort of thing. Um, we were contacted by University High School to do text messaging at their prom. Um, and when we were contacted to do that, I said, sure, no problem. Can you give me any, um, what I call, patriotic images? 
and and they they came at us with two things. One was a couple of bitmaps, you know, their the, the school logo, the school mascot, and something else. Uh, and they also gave us a DVD, which they had just had their homecoming. This was for their prom. They just had their homecoming, and at their homecoming, they gave all the students a DVD. Well, we got one of those DVDs, and so what we did is we turned that DVD into a media file that could be played in a media player panel, and those patriotic images that we got, we put into another kind of panel in VMU called the bitmap sequencer. And in the bitmap sequencer, you can take any kind of bitmap. It could be a BMP, JPEG, uh, a GIF file, a TGA, you name it. It'll take all kinds of different kind of bitmaps. You get these bitmaps that, like I say, we just asked the principal for these things. Said, sure, no problem. We got them. Here you go. So we put those into the layout. Notice that this layout's kind of bluish. That was their high school color. So um, this is kind of a preparatory step. You get a high school prom, a concert, something like that. They want to do text messaging. Um, yeah, sure, just if you can give me a, a couple things. What's your school color? What's your patriotic images? Put them in the VMU a couple hours before or a couple minutes before even. And we go into play mode. And here's the result. There's their DVD. Here's a bitmap sequencer, which will randomly sequence the images that they supply. Hopefully, this is happening. You know, maybe I actually deleted a couple of them, but I can maybe illustrate that. Let's see. Look, here's the designer. Here's the bitmap sequencer. Yes, right now it only has one, but I think I saved a couple of them. I'll add another picture. University High School logo. Here's the Cougar Paw. Here's their cougar. Um, all right, and so we'll add another one, which is the crest. So you can see how you add these to the bitmap sequencer. Bitmap sequencer is a panel here. It can be resized and moved just like any other panel. And the, the, the content options are the sequence. And you can change that sequence just by adding bitmaps to it. Um, it has a static display time and transition speed. What that means is that it's going to show each bitmap for five seconds and then transition at a rather medium pace. We can say medium. Um, and there's different ways that you can transition between the, the bitmaps. You can crossfade between them. You can slide one over the other from the left, from the right. There's different rolling effects and so forth. Usually we just leave this on random effects. It keeps it kind of interesting. And now, Every five seconds, this will transition to another bitmap using a random effect. So what you're seeing right now is the actual, the very screen that was used. And in fact, these are the very text messages that were used and, and, and uh, cast by the, the uh, high school students. Um, this is just what the people saw at their high school prom, their DVD animated bitmaps or patriotic images, scrolling text that tells them what to do, tell a joke, say hi to a friend, chat it up, to send your text message, send it to this number, so forth. So there's the text messages. Very simple to do, all standard VMU stuff, no Photoshop at all, just you know, a couple of panels, put some 3D borders on it, blue wash, and away we go. Let's see what else we got in here. As I was saying earlier during the introduction, um, IMU was used on uh, cable television, thousands of viewers, or millions actually, uh, for a yellow card concert where this was, uh, there was a, a yellow card concert Saturday, October 9th on 2004 on the NHD channel, which is, uh, if you've got an HD TV, you might actually have the NHD channel. Um, well, Saturday, October 9th, if you've been watching, this is what you would have seen. Um, we have a couple of different media players here. One of them showing uh, promotions for, for the text messaging event. One of them was showing a, a pre-show video of the actual concert. For a half hour, people got to have their 15 seconds of fame, actually. 
This was the very text message that was run. The screen's a little bit bigger, so this wasn't kind of so crowded down in this area here. It's a true 1920 by 1080 presentation. So this laptop isn't quite up to that. But this was a kind of a, a pre-concert promotion that was done. Um, so you can see just a couple of uh, media player panels, this background that was done in, um, in Photoshop, a couple of transparent message panel, voting panel, scrolling text panel, nothing to it. And yet, it's this powerful that here in this little laptop, I can have something that is powerful enough to run on an HD network. So um, hopefully this has been a, a pretty good introduction to VMU, panels, how to go into design mode, customize panels, backgrounds, and that sort of thing. Um, I'd say that the rest can be gotten just by exploration. Click on the options, see what it does.